Hello everybody and welcome. So today is the day. I have been kind of waiting for this day but kind of not. Because uh, I mean I like change but I don't. I'm a very complex person. So I'm going to be changing out the Tesla style unit for a DeSato one that will mount like so. Something like that, yeah. So I guess let's just get to the reason why. Uh, there is nothing inherently wrong with the Tesla style unit, but I like to test things out, uh, if you have not figured that out yet. <laughs> so I had the stock unit in here for a while, and it was okay. It was, uh, it had its ups and downs. Uh, I did not want to pay extra for a map update. Because, uh, I mean, after you do that a couple of times, honestly, you could buy one of either this or the DeSata unit. Um, you know, just so you can have the, well, I say the latest navigation. But by the time you get the navigation update, it's still a year old, which is crazy to me. So, Android unit to the rescue. You can... Do whatever you want with it. Waze, Google Maps, Sigic, whatever. TomTom Tom Maps. There's tons of applications out there. I had gotten, uh, I replaced the stock unit with this Tesla style. Uh, I had bought from, uh, or I had bought a couple, uh, it's probably been about six months ago now, roughly. Um, I've had it for a little while. So, uh, since getting it, I have updated it with the uh, custom firmware uh, from a gentleman named Sergey. Uh, it's actually a little bit faster now. It enables a couple of extra options and just general over, uh, you know, generally better. Um, but there's still room for improvement. So a couple months ago, I purchased the DeSata unit and I got it like this one, second hand. Um, from a guy who actually switched to one of the newer units of this. Uh, but then, like, within a couple of weeks, he switched back to the DeSata. <laughs> uh, because the newer unit of this is fast, is slow boot only. Uh, so, I did a whole video about slow boot versus fast boot. Uh, you can go back and check that out. I'll link it in, in the description below. Or maybe up here, there, somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. Um, but, so, try, try not to make it too much longer, uh, I want to try out the DeSata for various reasons, um, and it's just, it's time to change it. So I guess let's just get right on into it. Alright, so to remove the Tesla style unit, it's actually fairly easy. Uh, the first thing you do is you remove the bottom piece down here, under the radio, which just kind of clips in with these little clips. I had mine loose um, because it can be a little bit of a pain to get out. Uh, and then once you do that, you reach behind the unit. Let's see if we can adjust this camera down some. There we go. You reach behind the unit and gently pull out. And that'll get the bottom out. And then you kind of work your hand around to the side and gently try to get the top out. The top is the trickiest to me. There we go. Okay, so that one wants to be a little bit of a pain. So what I highly suggest is getting some blue painter's tape. And I probably should have done this before I tried to mess with it. But get it, get as close to the edge as you can. That way, you have a lot less chance of damaging something, scratching it, stuff like that. And it is easier when the unit is not fastened on the bottom. 
and I'll fix that a little bit better. We can do the other side in a second. But for now, I need to get this top out. And there we go. Just a gentle pry, and we have the unit out. So now you need to disconnect all of the connectors back here. Um, what I like to do is get my microfiber cloth, lay it down, and these can actually stay with the unit. That's just the USBs. I had run one kind of over to the glove box because the DeSato will have its own USBs. Actually, let's unhook that from the, this is for the factory USB. You do have to be careful because that will slide out. All right, and then we unhook that one. That one, that one, that's the radio antenna, that one will move too, and that one. This one is for your AC controls, and then that is the Tesla style unit undone. Now the one thing that I would highly recommend is taking all of these clips off because you will need them for the DeSata unit. And these can be tricky little boogers to get off. Kind of gently pry up a little bit and come straight off. I, I'm going to try to get a couple of extra of these and I uh, suggest that you do the same. I'll post a link uh, in the description below for it from Amazon. Alright, so now we have a big gaping hole in our dash. Yay! But we have... Also, another unit. This is the DeSata unit. This is the back of it. It does have a external Wi-Fi. It has HDMI out. Whole bunch of stuff to go back there. The main plugs. And I'm going to go ahead and put this adapter on here. For the GPS okay. and whenever I bought this uh, the guy had already mounted the uh, mounted it into the dash kit which I am thankful for because what I understand is that it is a royal pain in the butt to get it done and let's see it comes with an SD card just got to push in gently there we go. It comes with a 16 gig card. You can see that. Mm, 16 gig. Okay. You can take my word for it. And the big thing is, don't worry, there is no working DVD in this or CD in this thing. That is just generic Chinese manufacturing. So don't worry about that. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get all of these connectors hooked up so that we can get this thing installed. Alright, so here is the USB. Comes with it. And make sure that is good and tight. And it is. And one thing about the uh, these units is they come with the dongle for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, I am going to hook that up just because. And whenever you order, make sure that you get the correct CAN bus adapter. Because that will make things much, much, much simpler. And unfortunately, since this was purchased secondhand, the wires are kind of a little mess right now but we'll sort through it 
Okay. All right. So let's see here. We have what looks like the antenna. Antenna. Yep. That works. <laughs> the one thing that this has that the Tesla style doesn't is a separate ground. Um, I'm not quite certain of exactly why, because there should be one in the uh, in the harness, but maybe this has takes more power. I don't know. We're going to find out. Let me put this right here. That ground, when I hooked it up, there was an intermittent buzzing in the center dash speakers. So whenever I disconnected it, that went away. So you may not want to hook that one up. All right. So now let's play match maker. Make me a match. Okay. Just making sure that was the correct one. And again, make sure whenever you're plugging these in that they go in firmly. We have a couple options here. Looks like that one goes there. And it does. And this one will go here. Okay. That leaves this one out. which I believe was replaced by this one. I'm guessing. Because I do not have any more plugs. Available. That's my GPS. All right. All right, so now we get to plug into the back of the unit. Alright, so these should only go one place. I'm going to try... Yep. Yeah, they're keyed to where they only go one place. So that goes there. GPS goes there. Alright, so that leaves this one back over here, which goes to the stock AC control panel, which will be going back in. Alright, so now that we have that, we can plug in our other harness that has all of the RCAs and such. I believe that's going to go there, yep. Just because I do plan on eventually replay uh upgrading the amp and the speakers in this truck so that will come in very handy and for the factory i'm going to make the thing go through the factory hole and then that will go into one of the USBs which I believe there are multiple so you want this purple one for this that's that and then the purple one will go that looks like a 4 pin it will go on this second spot here well, so that is that and then we also have this double USB 
which goes looks like right below it. That's that. And I did miss that we do have to plug the antenna into the antenna. Okay, so now we need to take these USBs and what I like to do is feed them down on this right side. There's kind of a, you can feel it. It's like right behind the air vent, there's like a cavity that I like to feed them down because then that goes down behind the glove box and you can go in from the glove box in the top left corner of it and pull it into there that way i can have my usbs in the glove box okay that's for my axiom don't need that okay so the rest of this oh can't forget this this is the microphone for the hands-free right, and it only goes into one spot here all right so the only thing that is left now is the ground which i'm still kind of stumped on now if you're like me and you're kind of wary of the loose wires you can get uh, some zip ties and gently tie these together for now since i'm just testing this i'm going to leave them just kind of bundled behind the radio and as they say it'll be fine And this is where the tape on the sides come in very handy because you're trying to feed the wires through behind there and not scratch everything or get caught on stuff like I just did. Okay, okay so now I need to take my little yellow clips that I took off the stock head, stock head unit had on the Tesla style. Now I can put them on this one. Like I said, you might want to invest in a uh, box of these spares. I've got to order some. I'm missing one, I believe. It's not like earth shattering that you have them, but if you're like me and you hate rattles, these come in very handy because they help keep the rattles to a minimum. Make sure everything is still plugged in as best you can. All right, so now we got the screws down there that will hold this in. Okay, so I got my 10 millimeter bolts that go in the bottom. And I know y'all have seen me doing this and using my pocket knife as a pry tool. I do own the nylon pull on uh, pry tools i just forgot and i didn't really feel like going back inside to get them but since i had to go get the bolts well now i have them and they're not really needed so there you go they can go in the box so as long as you know where your 10 millimeter socket is you can install this pretty easily down there somewhere another 10 
I'm only doing the two bottom ones right now. And you ain't got to put hex on them, just snug. There you go. And that is that part. Now, we can do the AC controls, which also require snappy snappy, but I'm missing one, so it'll be okay. Okay, I must be missing something there. Ah, I am. There's a clip that is broke. No bueno. Okay, so since I did buy the second hand, and maybe in shipping or something, this little hang down clip thingy um, broke off of the um, mounting plate deal. So I had to kind of fudge something right here for right now and this side was very loose too so I had to this is kind of fudged right now but it works so now we get to mount the screen and it has this little IDE style cable it is keyed so it'll only go one way and if my fat fingers can go in there and do that, then pretty much anybody's can. And there. loosen the little wing nuts a little bit. I believe that's what you need to do. I've not read any destructions on this, so bear with me. I believe that is flush. Yep. And there we go. Yeah. That is the DeSeta. I believe it's a 10.2 inch ish screen. And that is the install. Removing the Tesla unit, installing this one and the factory AC controls, which some may like this more. But I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on this, showing the overview and all that. But for now, this is gone long enough. That's the install. You've seen me fumble enough. <laughs> and if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified whenever I upload a video, uh, click that little notification bell out beside it whenever you do, click subscribe. If you have any questions or comments um did i do something completely wrong let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more stuff like this let me know <laughs> but i guess until the next time y'all have a great day